I quickly want to record a slide deck which I prepared last year for the conference and which I gave a lightning talk on at Meme C++ 2016 uh, on presenting code on how to you know do our presentations which code this code better um, just because last year uh, I kind of you know prepared this for CppCon and my own conference and, uh, and after the conference some updates to this slide deck happened and that's why I never published the lightning talk I gave in the conference and now I want to re-record this to help these people which are currently uh, recording or you know preparing their slides and doing their their presentations for my conference or other conferences in the future and um, so this is about how to present code and and how to generally think about presentations in, in our modern age and I got started to think about this by Scott Myers who gave a great keynote in 2014 and the second part of that keynote was on how to prepare materials for the modern age and also um, he talked about preparing slides so this kind of this uh, this got me started thinking about it but also seeing many talks at many different conferences since then uh, made it clear that this is an important topic and I just want to educate the speaker audience and the possible speakers which are getting started in our community about ways to present code and what to, things to look for. Um, so first of all, I, I want to, you know, make sure you understand where your audience is today. So one, one thing for sure, you have the audience in the room but actually many, many more talks are, you know, being recorded today and the main audience for these talks is usually the internet, YouTube or other video platforms um, where they are then available to the public. And that is, and that, that is uh, then that many more people will watch this there. And this has a lot of an influence on how you should prepare your slides um, because um, the slides usually are recorded separately. Uh, which means things like laser pointers are not visible uh, to the recording and so nobody has any idea what you are pointing at. Um, more about this later. And of course, uh, still uh, you shouldn't neglect the audience in the room because that's actually the people which are coming to the conference which are caring about your talk enough to sit in the room with you and not to watch it online later when they have, you know, kind of, I don't know, a bag of popcorn. And um, so Code and presentations can have different forms. Um, first and for all, of course, code is text. So, and then, and then there's the question, should it be highlighted? I am a big fan of less highlighting, but not like totally non. So, and then there's always the option um, to highlight what you're talking about. And I think that is like the way you should go for, and I have later examples for that. Um, you also can take screenshots. I've seen many people do that and put that in your slides of code, screenshots of, uh, of code. Um, that's another opportunity to, to, to actually, you know, have your code be in, in a system uh, which is not really prepared to, to handle code by its own, like uh, PowerPoint or OpenOffice, what I'm using. Um, Maybe you're doing a live demo, then you have to know the editor. Some editors have a presentation mode that you also, you know, the audience also sees your, your buttons pressed, Cute Creator has this. And um, the general problem is that most uh, PowerPoint and OpenOffice, for example, these programs are not meant to present code and hence do not really support it very well. And then you have to see what you're going for and how to prepare for this. Um, and of course, uh, fonts are really, really important. So when you put code in, not as a screenshot, but as text in your slides, make sure you're aware about which fonts are um, there and what fonts you should use. Uh, the advantage of this is it brings readability. Um, monospace fonts are usually what is used for code, so you should also use it in your slides for code. And you should make sure that the font you're using or the, the text is not too thin because with the background and the projector, etc., um, this might be really hard to see in, in the bad lightning in a room, etc. So um, you should make sure that the uh, text, which actually then represents your code, is big enough to read. Uh, less is more in this case. 
um, highlighting, same thing, less highlighting is better. Uh, bold keywords are just, you know, black and white instead of many colors can be a lot better. Also gives you around uh, the issues with colors. Um, you need a, with colors, you should see that you have good contrast, that you have a, either a dark or light theme, uh, that your slides are not too colorful. Um, it's not a coloring book, the presentation. Um, you should be aware of uh, color blindness, so avoid red green text, but also blue text on black background, which is not strong enough, can be a problem with some uh, projectors, for example. And very, very important, stay consistent. Um, have one one layout, one, one theme through your slides. Um, and this also applies to code highlighting. You don't have to do the same highlighting you do for the other text, but you should, you know, stay with one highlighting and not have like every slide with a different code highlighting. Um, this is something I used last year at CppCon, just a simple text. Uh, and you see, I omit certain parts of the code because it's not needed for the presentation. Uh, that's another important thing. Um, the code on slides is just slide plus plus. It doesn't have to compile. Um, maybe you also want to prevent people from copy pasting this code into their production code. Yes, they do that. Um, so, and then when, when you start talking about a certain uh, part, you highlight what you're talking about, like I did here. Um, and a different example for this is here from a talk from Michael Cass, I think, about uh, ASIO. And then you just have a lot of text, a lot of code, great. And when when you start speaking about parts of the code, you, you start highlighting that code. Um, this is also a very good part to tell the audience at which part of the code you are and uh, still the other code which you have talked previously is visible, but the other code which either can be ignored or you will be speaking in the future about is still there to, to, to see where you're going in the future. Um, and then also um, be aware of the lightning situation. Uh, sometimes the, the light in the room can be kind of bad with a projector and this can really ruin your examples and code. So this pop-up, for example, is not really readable, but uh, to, 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 to highlight things on your slides with a pop-up pop, pop kind of to comment your code, is actually also a very nice idea. And um, yeah, if, if you're a presenter in, at a conference, always check the room where you're presenting in, and if you have the chance, adapt the slides. And then also, I kind of spoil it. Um, what do you do with questions and when 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 something needs to be highlighted or what which isn't highlighted? Um, you actually can draw on your slides or your screen with different programs. PowerPoint and OpenOffice automatically support this. And um, with that, you can just draw on the slide and it's there. And then with the next slide, it usually goes away. And this is a very good replacement for laser pointers uh, because actually in those examples, you see laser pointers are for the audience often hard to see. And as a presenter, it can be hard to, to point on the correct way where you're actually talking about it. It's kind of finicky and it's, it's messy. And if, if you're just at your laptop and you're able to, to just line out and um, that's much better. Also for a different reason, um, it's better visible, but also the CppCon really loves those double projections and I see them at other conferences, meeting C++ offers some things uh, similar. Um, so what do you do now? Um, you're only having the option if you if you if you plan to or if you if you used to to a laser pointer and if you use a laser pointer now uh, the problem is that you're ne neglecting half of the room because you just cannot show them that to them and even worse at my conference in the main track we have uh, the front people and the back people and, and you will never be able to show anything with a laser pointer to the back that that's just not working okay um, they maybe can see the front and still see you and still fine but um, if you highlight your slides like I showed you. Um, that would uh, fix the problem and you would have it automatically and everyone could see it. Um, so this is the way to go there. And so conclusions of this, uh, laser pointers are not recorded um, and they're often difficult to see for the audience and uh, highlight what you're talking about, especially if it's code. Um, 
less code is better. Uh, code on slides does not have to, to compile it. Less is better. Uh, everyone knows, you know, we're all programmers. And so really have what you're talking about on this slide and not like a lot of boilerplate code, except you're talking about boilerplate code. Uh, a live demo is a great way to present code, um, but needs to be prepared and you need to kind of know what, what you're talking about. It's kind of, you know, live, live demo does not have slides which tells you what you're talking about. So you need to be prepared for that. And of course, the keynote from Scott is online if you just want to, to know his thoughts on that. And um, just right now, I created a channel at the CPP Slack for uh, speakers who want to, you know, exchange tips for talks. And so if you want to join us, uh, it's speakers corner at the CPP Slack dot com and of course if you still need an invite this is a great slack not only for speakers also for the normal c++ audience uh, great community there uh, join us at cpp lang now sh thank you and with that i am through with this and i hope i, I could give you a lot of good tips on how to present code and that um, might improve our talks in the future because uh, I think it's very important that we um, we strive for improving our talks and make it easier to follow and easier to understand what we're talking about, uh, is, especially if we present code, because it's not that easy. It's uh, the presentation formats we usually use uh, are not built for presenting code from directly day one. So 